Hello, this is Olivier de Rivière. This is the uh, video behind the scene of uh, Dying Light 2. Here it's to support the episode 3 about narration. Uh, I encourage you to watch the video to understand the principles of what was done. And this video is more for professionals uh, than anybody else, but anybody can watch this and uh, have some, you know, knowledge out of this, hopefully. So let's just dive into it. Um, I'm not going to like describe many things that you're going to see me do on screen because it's going to take me too much time and I don't want to lose your time. And uh, let's just talk about the principles of open world games. Uh, usually what happens is open world games have like uh, two main states, which is like I'm in the open world doing activities and all of what is uh, the generic matters. And I'm in the story doing the specific uh, and closed environment story. Uh, as you've seen on the video, uh, Techland didn't want this. They wanted the story to happen in the open world so you could leave anytime you want uh, the zone uh, where the quest happens. And why is this very important for me? Because I want to make the music for the quest very unique and very driving in terms of narration. And if uh, you start a quest in the open world and you have something that pushes you about whatever the intention of the creative director uh, was, so let's say it's uh, about, you know, it's um, uh, tense, it's tense now, but you don't want to go to the mission objective, but you want to go do some activities, but you still have the mission, it would be very bad to feel the tense music, although you're just doing some activities uh, freely. So that's where the, the big challenge happened. It was like, okay, how do we make sure that as the players can leave any time a quest, they can you know enjoy going in the open world, but also come back to the quest and get back the feeling. So this first level of uh, implementation, open world story happens also in, Wa in Dying Light 2, but I'm not gonna talk much about this. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the fact that most of it happens in the open world. So the second layer below, you know, when you're entering the open world is once again, something very common is uh, you have the roaming and then you have the stealth fight. So, you know, you're fighting against enemies. It takes over, you know, the roaming. Once again, lots of rules there. It doesn't mean that all the fights will trigger this. Uh, many, you know, lines of codes for this. Let's dive more into what is in roaming. As you can see here, the state group on roaming is uh, taking all of these activities that we showed you on the videos. So you have, you know, of course, the uh, uh, parkour, you have the windmill, tower ascension, safe zone. I mean, all of the activities you can do in Dying Light 2 are here. One thing though is the default activity. So when you're not doing anything, we decided uh, to call it explore. You're just exploring. And it means that if you're on the street level and you're, you know, just following the street path uh, and not going on the rooftop, uh, you will stay there. You won't have much music, maybe no music at all. Once again, you're in generic uh, uh, open world. If you go on rooftops, the parkour will trigger. If you do parkour, you know the drill. Watch the previous video if you don't. So now we're in explore and uh, nothing happens. Uh, whereas also in the open world. So let's just pretend I'm in the open world here. Uh, I'm exploring and the global situation is explore. So that's what we have here. All right. Um, what happens is um, we created a system that when you're, so let's go to explore here. When you're exploring, we can know if you're in the default or generic or define, which is specific music. Remember this uh, circle that we talked in the video? Well, that's exactly this. It's like, if you're in the circle, it's the define specific. If you're out of the circle, it's the default, okay? So you can understand that uh, going further down here, we have the default explorer and define explorer. And what's the big difference? The default explorer is just like some, I mean, don't pay much attention of this, but basically it's nothing. There is nothing there, okay? Look at the define explorer. The define explorer is all of the quests are there. You see, so it's very interesting to see that already the explorer itself, which 
at the very beginning I told you is the default value here, okay, will have two uh, behavior. Either it's the generic, so nothing much, or it's the quest. And what makes the default define switch is the circle that happens. So when you're in define explore, and in our case, we're in, you know, uh, the only way out. So where is it? Uh, only way out, of course. Okay, here. So let me go to what the game will do is like, I mean, define. And in define, I mean, the only way out. Uh, here. Okay. So now I'm exactly into act one, only way out. This is what I'm playing now. Okay. And so now what happens is what we have is all the bits of the quest, which is like, go there, talk to this person. Oh, this person is saying this, so we want to change the music. Oh, now you're going out, we want to change the music. Or oh, now you're taking this object. Anything can change the music. And the way I do this, I guess it's something uh, quite common, I don't know, is that I do with um, alphabetical order like this. And it's like, so when it starts, you have this, and then all of the actions that we thought were uh, interesting to use, you see entering the tunnel, then you have the, the cutscene, then you kill an infected, you're inside the shaft, you discuss with uh, Hakon. You know, all of the actions we wanted music to change are there. It's quite extensive, you see, for just one quest. I don't remember how many quests, but imagine the numbers of uh, uh, states that we have um, and you would say, oh, but uh, it's kind of easy now because basically the player is going from one you know, state to the next depending on what's happening in the game. Uh, so that's dia is dialogue. Okay, where did he? So this dialogue triggers something, this dialogue triggers something, this dialogue, you know. So lots of dialogue, you see. End of dialogue, 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 dialogue. You know, oh, wait, wait is over my turn yet you know Hubert runs away so it's not just dialogue it's like many other stuff um, so when you're following this and you're like okay this is very easy because basically it's a straightforward game as it would be for any linear game okay so you're like okay I'm going there but remember on the um, previous video this uh, l this straight line that was the narration you can leave it whenever you want and go inside the open world. And so what happens is like when you leave it, you go from define, that is here, of course, back to default. It's very easy to understand this. Okay, so we're going the state, define, default. Of course, the way we did it is very musical. The same way we did for uh, the parkour with injections of reverb, playing with states, RTPC, you know, so the music fades away very nicely. It's not like, oh, uh, it's a fade out, which to me, you know, is something from the past. We need to, I mean, we have the tools now to make it much better in terms of feeling natural about the music leaving uh, for another music or for just, you know, the uh, environment sound design. So having done this sort of defined default is the first step of explore. One thing that also you should know is, I mean, it's a detail, but it's important. When you're in define, you will never trigger, uh, for those who will ask the question I know, you will never trigger parkour anymore. So it means that it doesn't matter where you are, you know, on the street level or on the rooftop level, it's going to be explore for both. So it means two things. It means that we have control to play music on the ground level, the rooftop. You know, we still can know because we have, you know, the the state, we have the altitude RTPC. We could play with this still, but we can override this very easily. And then also, what does it mean? It means that all the parameters for the parkour are seen in place. So we can do parkour specific music with all the features of the parkour within Explore. Very important. So now I'm opening the only way out and you can see there is a lot of parkour, you know, which are like very tailored. Why? Because you will see here that, you know, the parkours that are here and you can see here uh, are the ones that we used. I mean, not all of them, I guess it's like, you know, some tests, you know, a lot of 
testing, you know, figuring out what plays, how should be played. You know, it's a lot of, once again, iteration. Don't think uh, this is something that is, uh, oh, we do, it, we do it in one hour and that's done. I mean, at the end of the project, this is how it goes because the system is very flexible. But at the beginning, we need to make sure that all the systems are working very good. So we have, so that where the video starts, I think it's uh, here. Uh, no, it's here. That's the video, you know, on the episode three, the second part, this is the video and you're sent to find Lucas. So we need to find this. Uh, I don't want to search it. I will search it manually, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this one. So that's the music. That's what you hear when you're uh, trying to find uh, the, the item, okay? And the thing is, uh, this is just like one, I think, uh, layer. It's, yes, it's nothing, whoops, uh, nothing uh, difficult. So it's just playing, okay? One thing though is, uh, which is interesting, is that when you start going to the direction that um, Hakon tells you, you know, to go to the, the, the windmill, uh, why is, okay, uh, this is what happens. So let's look, you know, you have this end of Hakon. Hakon tells you, you know, uh, Hubert is over there. And now what's triggered is this one. Okay, no stop. So it means that for us, you know, it was like a way for telling, okay, if you stop, like, you know that in the parkour, if you stop, the music stop. Well, here, the music won't stop. And what happens is like, you see, it's the same structure of the parkour, but now it's just two levels. And you have this one, which is like the regular one. Okay, and if you start parkouring, I mean, I'm not going to do it here uh, using all those parameters. Uh, if you start parkouring, then the music will switch to this one, which is much more like. Oh, of course, I need to use the parameters because. Uh, come on, it's a very heavy session, so I guess it's the uh, here. There you go. So that you see, that's the parkour parameters. So they work, although you can see the blue thing, it's happening on Explore because Explore is overriding the generic parkour when you're, you're inside the specific zone of the quest uh, to have more control, okay? We didn't want to have like Explore, Parkour, Explore, Parkour within a quest, but rather have the parkours within the Explore. I hope you're following. <laughs> um, so uh, you have these... Uh, already uh, very, let's say, um, the dichotomy is very, like, as detailed as possible. We can go deep and change anything we want whenever we want, changing the rules for anything. But the thing is, when you reach the, um, the windmill, as you saw on the first level of the windmill, it was not the generic music. You know, if I go to windmill here, so now I'm inside, and this is like the generic music for the parkour. That's the music you should hear when you're on the first level, you know, of the windmill. Remember, because um, once again, we're not into this uh, story sort of um, big, it's up there, big state group. We're still in the open world, okay? And in the open world, we're in roaming. And look, remember, like in roaming, what happens is like, so right now you're in define explore. Okay, so I'm going and I get to the windmill. When I'm entering the windmill, the game will switch here. Of course, because we're not doing this sort of, as I've mentioned at the beginning, this sort of like, oh, you're either in the open world, uh, open world or the story. No, it's within the open world that we're doing a lot of quests. Um, and this is to have the default define, remember? Like to be like the zone will put you back to the define or the default, you know, if you enter or leave the zone. So it means that going back to the windmill generic, we have this, you know, for the generic, but we're not, we don't want, if you get to the windmill and you have, uh, this uh, waypoint from the quest that tells you he's just there and the music is this. Uh, hold on. 
So if the music is uh, like this, you know, and you're going to the, the windmill, and, you know, this has a, a sort of a mysterious, like it's the investigation. I'm like, okay, where am I going? What am I doing? You know, and when you're entering the windmill, if you get the windmill music system, then it will kill the drive, right? You will feel like, oh, now I'm in the windmill, you know, here. You're like, okay, so I sort of forget about the narration drive, which is not so good. So what happens is very simple in some ways, but that's, you know, the killer in sense of experience. The windmill itself has the default define itself. And it means that for the only way out, you see, we had like to use this on two uh, quests that happen over windmills. It has a specific uh, hierarchy for only way out, which is right here. And instead of having for, you know, the regular system, let's say, what we have is as long as you have those things, which are the quests specific, you see everything is very unique. But if you're outside, so all of the other ones, you go back to the generic windmill system, which is here. So that's the windmill for uh, the define that will have, you know, the define state group of the only way out here with all of the bits of the narration. Because remember that you're going first level, you talk to the guy, then he says to you to wait. So I'm pretty sure you can see it. Like, uh, yeah, you see, uh, dialogue with Hubert. Well, it's not Hubert, but you think it is starts, but then he tells you to wait. Then the wait is over my turn yet, you know, uh, there's a stranger for you, you know, and Uber runs away. So you can see that this is all of this is here and you can see how different music are playing because it's the defined narrative bit and we want to stay in control of what's going on there. Imagine that when he's like, oh, I want you to do this. Oh, Uber, there is this guy over there and you have the generic music of the, the windmill in the background. It will kill the intention because the intention now is this. It will be, uh, yeah, sure. That's the intention. Listen how different it is now. Come on, Wise. You can do it. It's completely different. You know? You, you, you feel the push. Because Beza, the creative director, was like, oh, you need to feel the, the urgency, you know? So that's what's amazing. It's like you're in the windmill and you have full control over the music depending on what's going on. But if you go and decide to sort of like um, um, make the windmill, you know, repair the windmill. So it means that you're going uh, up a level, okay? And by doing so, what happens is like, um, you're gonna have this thing going on. The ascension level one will be like this. And then look, you have level two, level three, as it is. So level one would be this, you know, when you're entering. And then level two, because you're passing the level one, will be the generic level two, which is this. You saw that in the video, in the, the, the episode three. Uh, that if you stay with on the level, the music doesn't change, although you're level one of the windmill, uh, let's say, structure. So in the generic world, it will play the level one music, but here it plays the hack on dialogue. And so, you know, what's even more, let's say, um, deep is like, if you do the windmill, because you, you maybe you don't want to do the windmill, so as I've men mentioned to you, if you don't do the windmill, then all of those states happen in the windmill. But if you repair the windmill, then it becomes a safe zone. And the safe zone, you know, it's going to be windmill safe zone. And look, we have only way out, the define only way out right there that will trigger only way out. And you'll see that all of what I showed you is exactly the same here because the global situation of the windmill has become from 
uh, from windmill to save zone. Where is it? It's coming here. As we come from windmill to save zone, because you changed it, you repaired it, and in terms of system for the game, it's no more a windmill, it's a save zone, with its, which is on rule. And, uh, and so we have to replicate the same sort of structure if you make the save zone. And this is true for any activities that we want to override that has different, let's say, the, on the same location, the activity can be transformed. Uh, it's not many of them. So basically, um, that's the, the system, how it works with the default define, which is very important. It's not what we are used to in a sense that it's not like exclusive for, oh, that's the story and that's the open world. No, it's the open world and the story within the open world is overriding you know, the, the generic system because we can tailor anything we want. And that's like, this is a game changer for somebody like me as a gamer because I feel I'm free to start a quest, do whatever I want, have the drive for the quest. But if I leave, uh, the music will go away. And if I come back, the music will come back where I left off. So I hope you understood. I hope I was clear enough. Um, I don't want to go too much deep into this thing because I guess it's a rabbit hole. But, you know, let me know if you have some questions. And uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye.